Hi everyone, so uh, this was the last question which I looked at which really t uh, took my interest because it really isn't bad at all and I'm trying to, what I've been doing for the last couple of months really with a step question I've been doing is mostly doing ones which I think would be ideal for people in uh, year 12 who've never, you know, seen any uh, step before and so I try and carefully select them so that it doesn't depend on like year 13 stuff. Um, this is a great example of one to be honest which really doesn't depend on much at all other than, once again, your ability to draw a really good diagram. Now, I'm going to show you what the one I drew like you know I mean I'm not brilliant drawer or anything like that but they said the the goat is tethered to like a barn which is square yeah and so made all the sides 2a now the thing is you don't know where he's tethered on the barn now you might assume it's a corner but you can't just assume that that might maximize the area which I think indeed it does but you can't assume that and in the answers they make it very clear that they you can't just say where well, it's bound to be maximized at the corner uh, you know how do you know that it might be maximized if you tether him in the middle um, it's not as minimized there but there we go <laughs> um, but we can only show that with the actual working so I think when I originally did this, I popped this here. My answer seemed to look very similar to the one which they provided, actually, except I had a diagram. And they said how important a diagram is, but then didn't provide you with one. So, uh, so if this is going to be x, this is going to be 2a minus x. Now, this takes a bit of imagination, because remember, the rope is 4a. Yeah, and you've got to think about what happens when it hits the corner. Now, it's no problem here. I realise straight away we're going to have, I'm sure you will too, you're going to have like a semicircle when it swings round there. Yeah, and it's going to swing you up to here. Yeah. But at that point, it's going to turn on that point there. So it's not going to be 4A anymore. It's going to be 4A take away this X from here to here. And that's what you're going to have to use as your radius of the quarter circle, which it's going to end up swinging round here. Yeah. Oh, let me do that in dotted. Yeah, and then you're going to have a line down here. Well, this is length 2a, remember? Yeah, and so I'm just going to dot that across there. We'll do with that in a second. This is length 2a, so we need to do 4a minus x, which is the current kind of radius of that quarter circle, but we need to take away a 2a from it to find the length of this. Yeah, and that means that that's going to be length 2a minus x. Yeah, um, and I think actually it might be slightly shorter than that because I want it to look like it's going to just tuck inside. You'll see why in a second. I didn't notice straight away. You know, it's like when you're first initially drawing these, you gradually kind of like realize your mistakes in the diagram. Now, doing this on the other side, we're going to have this as length 4a minus, open bracket, 2a minus x, and 4a minus 2a minus x actually gives you 2a plus x, doesn't it? So this is going to be 2a plus x, and then that's going to swing round to say here, and as that's 2a, well, if you do 2a minus 2a plus x, this last one from here to here is just going to be x. Now, if you add these two together, you get 2a. So they're actually going to meet up perfectly like that. Yeah. Now, because my diagram's not brilliant, I know some of you do like a smashing diagram. Well, here's one I drew earlier on GeoGebra. If I actually show you this, like, look, it's going to trace out a path like that on this side. And that's just with 4a. Yeah, um, but then here, we're going to be tracing out that. Oh, hang on, have I got the right? Oh, no, hang on. <laughs> I'm doing it wrong. Sorry, I've moved the wrong one. Uh, let me just start this again. There we go. If you shake it, then it seems to get rid of all the tracing. So we're going to have this lovely semicircle first. Yeah. But then here, we're going to have a quarter circle. Here, we're going to have like a, a quarter circle as well. And then for these last two, we're going to have quarter circles. So it's just the radii, which we've already worked out, which we need to be interested in. Because what we've got here is a quarter circle, a quarter circle, a quarter circle, a quarter circle, all of different radii, and then a semicircle of different radii again. But get that lovely little shape. Almost looks like a squished heart. There we go. Ah. Okay, so to work out the answers, what I did, and I kind of got both answers here in the same like uh, kind of a final result, but let me show you. I worked out the area, yeah, the general area. So the general area is going to be the semicircle, which is just because that's radius 4a. I'm going to do pi times 4a squared, all squared, remember. But I'm going to divide it by 2 because it's a semicircle. Then all the rest are quarter circles. So this quarter circle, well, that's 4a minus x, all squared. And then the next quarter circle is going to be 2a minus x, all squared. And then the next quarter circle, if we're going round like that, is going to be just x squared. 
and then the last one is going to be 2a plus x all squared. Yeah, and that's going to work us out the area. Now we've basically got the problem as uh, you know in, in an algebraic kind of form rather than a uh, you know a geometry kind of a well, lovely picture. Okay, let's factorise out a pi over four because all the terms have got a pi, and if I double this, double the top, double the bottom, then that would be pi over four as well. So that's sixteen a squared doubled is thirty two a squared. Then here we're going to get sixteen a squared minus eight a x plus x squared. Here we're going to get 4a squared minus 4ax plus x squared. Here we're going to get an x squared. And lastly, here we're going to get a 4a squared plus 4ax plus x squared. Yeah. So do expect to have long, like uh, occasional long bits of algebra in step. It's just the way it is. OK, right, we've got a 32 plus a 16. That makes a 48, I think. Um, 52... 56a squared. Yeah, you can see I'm a big fan of ticking as you go. Minus 8ax, minus 4ax is minus 12ax, but plus that we're going to get minus 8ax, and then we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4x squared. Now, if you look very carefully, all of those are divisible by 4, so we can just leave the pi outside and times in the quarter, because it makes these numbers smaller, which is a result. We're going to get 14a squared minus 2ax plus x squared, yeah? Now, that's a quadratic in x. Remember that a is kind of like your fixed constant here, because they just said the you know, barn is of uh, width 2a. X is the thing which is varying, which is just where you're tethering the rope. You know, let's vary like where we're tethering the rope and keep the barn size fixed. That makes sense. So in other words, what have we got here? Well, we've got a quadratic and we're trying to find like minimums and maximums. So I'm going to complete the square. Definitely the way to go. You could use calculus. Of course, you could use calculus. I'll just write it down the other way around just to remind us. And I've always said this to students. You know, we use letters at the start of the alphabet for constants. And we use letters at the end of the alphabet for variables. You know, that is, there's a good reason for that. It's so we don't muddle them up. OK, let's complete the square. x minus a squared minus a squared plus 14a squared. So that's obviously a equals pi times x minus a squared plus 13 a squared. Right. Firstly, if I do the last question first, if I find the minimum value of the area, well, the minimum value of the area is going to occur when this bracket equals 0, giving you 13 pi a squared. So you can see from this the minimum value of a occurs when x equals a. Note that if you interpret that in a diagram, it makes a lot of sense. Sam, put it right in the middle, and the goat won't get so much grass to graze on. Yeah? Um, and so area equals, at this point, that goes to 0, 13 pi a squared. Yeah? So why does it have a, ma have a maximum value? Well, it has a maximum value because we've got a condition on x. x must be between 0 and 2a. It can't be longer than 2a because that's the side of the thing. So note that x is between... 0 and 2 little a, yeah, right in the middle you get the minimum value, well actually at x equals 0 or x equals 2a you're going to get a maximum value and that just corresponds to him being tied either at this end or this end and obviously it shouldn't matter which corner he's tethered to, he's going to get the same area. X can't be any larger than that, that would make a bigger if x could be larger than that but that wouldn't make sense because then he's not tied onto the barn and so it just doesn't make sense, it would be like over here. Um, but yeah and of course it makes sense as well in a kind of loose sense like of course you want to be tied to a corner because then you get a big quarter circle of, uh, you know, three quarters, sorry, you get a big three quarter circle with the radius as 4a. And so, yeah, that makes, makes sense. It kind of, kind of makes intuitive sense, yeah? Hence, max a occurs when probably easiest to see it that x equals 2a here. I mean, this is the line of symmetry x equals a for the quadratic anyway, isn't it? So obviously, it doesn't matter if you use 0 or 2a. What we're saying is when x is a, y is, uh, what is it, 13 pi a squared. So this is like a 13 pi a squared. And then it's just a typical quadratic, but we're saying at 0 and at 2a, it's going to have, well, you'll see in a second, 14 pi a squared. Because if we set x equal to 0 or 2a, yeah, you can use either, you're going to get area equals pi times by 2a minus a, which is just a squared, 
plus 13a squared, which equals 14 pi a squared. I'm not sure if the examiner wanted you to really justify why this has to be a maximum. Um, I think a quick sketch shows it really nicely. Yeah, um, max value, since we've only got this defined at domain, if you like, if you're into range and domain, it's just that x is between 0 and 2a, hence the range is that y, you know, or a in this case, is stuck between 13 pi a squared and 14 pi a squared. Apologies for my really shoddy handwriting there. Okay, hope that was useful. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you were looking at the, uh, these kinds of questions, all the best and keep working hard. Bye-bye.